Lisa, for you right now. Uh, convicted swindler Bernie Madoff talking to CNN Money about his life in prison. A one-time investment guru swindled nearly $20 billion from his own clients. He is now just himself a number. Madoff is inmate 61727-054. That's his identity at a medium security federal prison in North Carolina. And CNN Money's Aaron Smith joins me here now in New York. Had a chance to uh, speak with Bernie Madoff on the phone and also the Director of Wall Street Prison Consultants, Larry Levine, a former federal inmate himself, joins us in Los Angeles as well. Aaron, I want to begin with you, if I can. You've had this chance to uh, have a conversation with Bernie Madoff. I should clear up the record. We, uh, we don't pay for interviews, but he had to call us collect, didn't he? That's correct. Yeah, I actually uh, mailed him a letter when he was in prison, and I included my number, and the prison told me that basically he had to call me collect, which he did, and then I had to deposit money uh, from my own account, by the way, into Bernie Madoff's phone account and he did call me we spoke several times and we did this interview and then I uh, put more money in his account uh, about a week ago and I, I still haven't heard from <laughs> so him. So wait a minute so. you've given money to Bernie I've, Madoff that's yeah. got to hurt but let me tell let me ask you generally speaking uh, we've heard a couple of things since the guy was locked away and I'm sure a lot of people are thrilled to know he's still locked away and that he's not very happy about being locked away what does he say about his life behind bars? Well, he said that he can't sleep. He gets up at 4.30 every morning. And uh, I think that what he told me is he thinks about his family a lot, and it haunts him, uh, the death of his oldest son, Mark. Now, Mark committed suicide. He hanged himself on December 11, 2010. That was the second anniversary of his father's arrest. He also told me that uh, he thinks about Ruth, his wife of 50 years. And uh, he also actually uh, says that he's responsible for the death of uh, one of his investors, a Jeffrey Pickauer, who died of a heart attack, and is considered to be the biggest beneficiary of the Ponzi scheme. So he's taking responsibility for the death of that investor. He's sorry, and I'm guessing you mean he's taking responsibility for the suicide of his son. Yes. Is he taking responsibility, and does he show any kind of remorse for all the other awful parts of this crime? He said that he feels bad for the victims. Uh, I've talked have? to a lot of victims who say that they don't believe him. I spoke to someone, uh, uh, Mike DeVita, the other day, one of his victims, who said that it's just words. He doesn't really believe it. But he did say that. He said that he feels remorse for what he did for the victims. It's hard to, you know, believe it or at least assess anything when you're not able to look into his eyes and you're doing this on a telephone. But did you get any sense that maybe some of this time behind bars uh, in federal prison has had an effect, has actually created some humanity in, Barry Ma in Bernie Madoff? Well, I, I honestly do think that he feels bad about his son. I really sure, think that that rips him apart. Uh, he, put, he went through great pains to insulate his family from his wrongdoing, though it didn't work. His brother is now doing 10 years in prison for, for his you know, involvement with uh, Bernie Madoff. That's his brother, Peter. And as we know, you know, his son committed suicide, and Ruth is just basically not with him anymore. He's in prison. And when I spoke to him, though, he sounded very calm and collected and, and sort of reassuring. And he came across as the, the very intelligent man that he is. And I have to tell you, I can totally see how people would give him their money. And he started talking about the markets. And he definitely knows what he's talking about. And some of the stuff was above my head, to be honest with you. And well, I was kind of intimidated. Larry Levine, you've spent some time in a, uh, in a medium security federal prison. Give me some insight as to actually, what... Uh, uh, I was in 11 different federal institutions over 10 years. So I know okay. what he's going through. Then tell me what it's like. Aaron he's had a few gotten... years. Well, I think actually he might have scammed Aaron because he could have called him using the money he made at his job. The calls the are 23 cents a minute, and he is working on the inside. So I think he just scammed you out of some money. Aaron. <laughs> well, we wouldn't be surprised. He's, yeah, he's, he maybe did. He's got some skill there. Larry, but in all seriousness, when you get a guy like that, he's older, he's real white collar, how would he fare in federal prison? Would he fall into a hierarchy of some sort? Does he have to play tough guy? Or the fact that he's really smart and maybe could help no, these guys no, not where with whatever they need, would that, would that give him some, uh, some cachet? Not, well, not really where he's at. He's at a medium security. He's not at a maximum security. There's people there doing life sentences, but he is older, and the severity of his crimes, I mean... He's the king of the cons, king of the thieves. He's got a lot of respect among the inmates because of what he's done. Nobody's going to bother him, and he's probably handing out stock advice and such. And the job he had working in the commissary, 
I worked in the commissary at Lompoc at the federal prison. That is one of the best jobs in the whole system because you can get things other inmates can't. So he's getting yeah. perks, or he was. Well, Larry Levine, thank you for your insight. Aaron Smith, good scoop. And I think uh, all of us are probably thrilled to know that he's not sleeping at night because a lot of his victims haven't been able to sleep many nights since he, they were. He does have a new job, by the way. Oh, what is it? He is cleaning off phones and what computers. What is he doing? He's oh. cleaning phones and computers. And he uh, gets should paid pay him maybe 17, 29 cents an hour? There you go, 40 bucks a month. All right. Well,